Drink every time he says true that. Dude, true that. True. True that. True that. Dude, true that. He's drunk. We lost him, everybody. Jaime, weird running photos, Rivera. Jack, weirdest username 12. What? Thanks for not choosing my comments. <laughs> no problem, dude. Anytime. Playing this video at 0.25 playback speed is gold. Can we play that back? True that. That's right, it's that time of the week. I am Jaime Rivera, this is Pocket Now, and this is the Pocket Now Daily Recap, your comments for last week. On Monday, the topic was uh, 5G iPhones to a certain degree. It's been speculation, you know, the whole problem that Apple had with Qualcomm, the fact that Intel wasn't able to deliver on 5G iPhones, and then the fact that, you know, both companies made up, but uh, we're not getting 5G iPhones in 2019. It's gonna happen in 2020. And then as we looked at the roadmap, it seems that only the premium ones are getting 5G as of next year. And it's not until 2021 that all iPhones are going to have 5G. I asked you what you thought about that. We had 579 comments. Apple will be like 5G equals 5K. Oh my God, yeah. Uh, obviously right now with how new 5G is and because it's, en it's an entry to the technology, it makes sense for products to be a little more expensive as companies continue to you know, regain their investment and everything. It takes some time, like uh, the first generation iPhone was crazy expensive and it was 2G at a time when 3G was already ubiquitous. So Apple is not famous for launching cutting edge technology and still charging you a lot for it. So yeah, 5K. I can, I can wait for 5G while buying a couple of Apple's $1,000 stands to stare at. Oh my god, that monitor stand has been the running joke everywhere. And you know what? I get it. I, you know, Apple, I think that the smartest thing would have been to be like, this is the new monitor. We already explained to you that it competes with $40,000 monitors. So that's going to be priced at $6,000 and don't make the stand optional. I think that that would have been the smarter thing to do. I mean, nobody would have cared. LTE is already fast enough for my use. I certainly can wait for 5G. Jesus, dude, depending on where you are. I mean, if you're in Eastern Europe, I get it. Your LTE speeds are great. If you're even in Latin America, certain countries like here in Honduras, uh, speeds here for LTE are great. But in the United States, LTE speeds are not. Particularly if you're in New York City, they're not. And so I do understand the purpose, I mean, Instead of investing in more capacities, companies are working on 5G in order to move people into 5G and have the others remain on 4G LTE in order to, you know, work on that capacity solution. But, uh, oh man, I just, I don't agree with you. Most of the United States, that hasn't been my experience. 5G is in its infancy, so it's fine that Apple will wait for 5G to grow and become better. Yes, I do have to agree with that. Right now, uh, if you see my 5G video with the Samsung Galaxy S10 5G and Verizon, I showed that uh, there is still a lot of work in progress, like beamforming and other services. So that is going to take some time. It's not immediate. Uh, we're hoping that it's gonna get done sooner or later. And then on Tuesday, the topic was uh, Huawei laptops, as obviously they're our fan favorites. We love these laptops, but uh, they were pulled from the Microsoft store over all the issues and now they're back uh, until supplies last apparently. I asked you, would you buy a Huawei laptop with everything that's going on? We had 414 comments. The MateBook X Pro are really good. I definitely buy one. Yes, I have to say, I love that computer. It is really, really good. I hate the nose cam, but it's such a good machine and I don't think that you should be concerned because uh, you're, it's Microsoft Windows, like it's, you're paying for it. When you buy the computer, you pay for the license. So it's not like if they can end support for you, it doesn't work that way when you're paying for a license. I would buy Huawei laptop and buy Windows OS separately. Uh, well, if you wanna pay for another license, it's up to you, man. I mean, I, you don't need to. The way it works is in the end user license agreement, you buy a computer with Windows, you're paying for the license. You get it. As long as Huawei is in the market, I'll always be buying. And you know, I have met a lot of people that have uh, developed a certain level of fan base for Huawei, and I don't blame them. I mean, they've been using their P20 Pros, now their P30 Pros. They love the fact that they've got good battery life and the software's good and the camera's great. 
Um, so I get it. And uh, again, I wish that the MakeBook X Pro would have been perfect. If they would have put the nose cam in a better placement, it would be the perfect computer in my opinion. Uh, but uh, yeah, either buy one Huawei MakeBook D or one Apple monitor stand. I'll go for the MakeBook D. <laughs> oh my God. And we continue to ramble Apple over this, but I get it, man. I yeah, you can buy the, I, I think you can even buy the MateBook for the amount of money of that monitor stand. Tell you what, you can buy a MacBook Air for the price of that monitor stand. We should actually make a separate video for every single thing that you can buy for the price of the Apple monitor stand. And then on Wednesday, the topic was the Samsung Galaxy Fold. Obviously, there's been fumbling over if it's gonna launch or not. We had trusted sources claiming that it was not ready, and then Samsung came on record to say that they were. Uh, I don't know, I asked you, what do you think? Do you think that Samsung is shooting themselves in the foot or not? We had 448 comments. They should delay it until it's ready. That being said, consumers need to understand it will be a more delicate device than the regular slab phone. Perhaps they should offer two year warranty. I do totally agree with you. When you're buying a product that, that that's that expensive, I remember when the Apple Watch, the first generation Apple Watch came out and they wanted, I think $16,000 for the gold variant. And I'm like, what else am I getting? Am I getting like lifetime warranty for that thing? And so I feel the same way about foldable products because as cool as they are, they have a lot of moving parts and so their opportunity for failure is larger than on a regular slab. That would be a great idea if the company would bring the two-year warranty. I mean, companies like LG already do it. Regardless of if you have a foldable product or not, that's how much they give you for an LG phone. So I think that should be the norm. Delayed as it's going to be great when it comes out. Wish I could buy one. I will see. I mean, we were covering separate rumors that we're actually going to discuss later over if it's going to be 5G or not 5G or if it's going to be two devices separately and then what are you going to pay for the other one? Um, it's not a cheap product, definitely. Is it cool? Oh man, it's, it's freaking fabulous. Delay the Galaxy Fold, perfect it, and add an S Pen, done. Oh man, I wish they could fit a Wacom digitizer in that thing, and yes, that would be like the perfect reason why to buy a foldable if you've got that added functionality of the stylus. They're gonna hurt sales for the Note 10 if they wait too long. That is a possibility. The Note 10, I don't expect to be an inexpensive phone, and therefore, yes, there is a possibility that they could, but I don't think that they hurt sales of the Galaxy S10. Uh, and these were announced in a parallel form, even though the S10 launched a lot earlier. It, it's a good point. I wonder what will happen. I mean, I think that that's one of the main reasons why the company has probably not launched anything yet because we're so close to the Note 10. And then Thursday, the topic was uh, Huawei and uh, the future, Android Q for its devices because, uh, well, the company has just announced that it's got 17 devices getting it. There are some Honor phones that are also getting it. Uh, meaning there is support. If you currently have a product, there is a guarantee. And actually, Huawei posted a whole website where they came clear about a lot of speculation over what happens if you're a current Huawei customer, uh, you know, just to put those uh, worries at ease. And I asked you, what did you think when you still buy Huawei products? We had 558 comments. To be frank, Huawei is one of the most secure phones right now, as it doesn't come with Facebook pre-installed. Oh my God, yes. You deserve all those likes, dude. I despise Facebook, I have to agree. Um, I can't comment about if they're secure or not, man, because, uh, you know, the world is full of other phones that don't come from China that will still spy on your location and listen to you and then serve you ads for it, so it's not just Facebook. The Huawei situation is like innovation are made with the hard work of engineers killed by the politics of governments. You're getting philosophical there, but I do get your point. I mean, we've uh, been dealing with unprecedented development over the last 20, 30 years with trade and how it's improved. I find it funny how the United States is now not wanting to trade once a company has clearly, I don't know, beaten its US companies in technology and certain things. Uh, you can argue if this was copying or not. I'm not gonna argue over that either. Uh, but yeah, I do agree with your point. I don't see a reason not to buy Huawei phones. If there's any other smartphone maker that can make waves in this segment, that'll be Huawei. You know, that's the beauty of a company that's private, if we could call it that way. They don't depend on the stock market, so they're not worried on, you know, looking good with investors or this or that, and let's fire people because we are, are you know, our stock is down. No, 
They're, they've got all this money and they invested in R&D. And this is the result. There's another company that's like this, which is Samsung. And this is the reason why Samsung is the most popular brand. And then finally, Friday, the topic was, you know, the fact that with the whole China ban, uh, this is a rather interesting development because we had Foxconn's founder and former chairman, listen to former, as uh, telling Apple, you know, we should move out of China. Uh, the thing about it is he's recommending that they move to Taiwan and then we learned that he was running for president so obviously it makes sense for him to want to bring jobs back to Taiwan and yes Foxconn is a Taiwanese company and everything but you know it just it got too weird. I asked you if you care where phones are built because uh, you know the rumors were that everything was going to move to India. We had 374 comments. In the 90s, I do care where the product was made, but right now, since the dawn of online shopping, not anymore. Exactly, I mean, I worked in an industry, aviation, where I would never get on a plane and be like, where is my pilot from? Was he born in the United States? No, you don't ask those kinds of questions because it's uh, the duty of each company to have their own procedures in order to guarantee that you know, either safety or the quality of a product is guaranteed. So I don't think that we're at a stage where we have to worry about these things anymore, but yeah. Care less where it comes from unless where it's coming from is costing me more money. Then I'll care deeply. You know, but that's a big issue and it's a more, it's a broader political issue than anything. Uh, because like I come from a third world country where I know that minimum wage is very bad. People can barely survive on that. And so it's one of those things where it's like, I would rather a company, again, I'm getting political and I apologize, but it's just a very broad topic where I know that uh, there is cheap labor, but it's not necessarily fair labor, if you understand what I mean. I would rather companies worry less about providing you know, income to investors and buying the next yacht and the new Rolls Royce for their CEO and instead make it, make it a little more equal. You get where I'm going. I don't care which country it's made, as long as it's high quality and can lower the price, that would be good. True, and uh, I do feel that, you know, going broader on the point that I just made, I think that manufacturing in certain countries is overly exaggerated in the cost as well. So I'm not saying that one thing is the only bad thing. A lot of things need to improve. But true, obviously in the end as a consumer, you wanna pay the least for it, true. Don't care where tech is made as long as it performs as promised. Yes, true, and then that's the problem. Like right now, the Galaxy S8 Active was the phone that I used to, that I used to run. I mean, it's made in Korea with great quality and everything, and now my battery is expanding. Uh, you know, so even the top brands deal with certain quality issues. I mean, we even talked about the Galaxy S7 Active having issues with water resistance and it was an active phone. So, you know, even the best companies have issues. We remember the battery issues with Apple or foldable products from Cupertino. So yeah, it's, it's even that is not guaranteed. That's it for the Pocket Out Daily Recap. Thank you so much for watching. If you want your comments to be featured, keep them short, stick to the point, and try to get some thumbs up. It helps us spot them a lot easier. You can also follow us on social media. Our extended coverage happens and Instagram. And you can also follow me for, you know, I try phones out and I use those photos on my personal Instagram. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week.